This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast, episode 320. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron, on the Twitter, talking about some technology, some gears, gadgets, all kinds of fun stuff here uh, from the Pittsburgh State of Mind. I'm a video producer here in the area, podcasting, all kinds of fun things. Sometimes we play on Facebook Live, as we are tonight. Also with me in the studio is John Tachilla, gadget extraordinaire for Big Bank Incorporated. Incorporated Limited. International. I was trying to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> trying to mix it up a little bit. Thank you for joining me back in Studio A for Awesome. How you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing today on this fine Tuesday oh, afternoon? Oh, a great Tuesday. Experimenting. Experimenting with some um, new side hustles with technology that I hope to talk to you guys in the future uh, but today we're going to talk about some other uh, hustles, not hustles, but other things, other work things going on. Hustles or hassles? Hustles and hassles. There was a hassle with it. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. And as we were, you were just <laughs> witness to, Chilla, there were some hassles with some new, some of the new stuff that we'll talk about in the future. Um, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. We talk tech, we get geeky. AwesomeCast.net. Subscribe to this and so many interviews. We're going to be talking to the great people behind Replay FX. That should be up this Thursday as the Awesome Chat interview. And actually going to be going to Alpha Lab to talk to a couple companies this week as well. Um, in the meantime, like I said, please subscribe to that uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Facebook for the video versions. And... Uh, and check us out here live, live.awesomecast.net, every Tuesday about 7 p.m. Eastern time. And also follow the Facebook page because we are uh, lately using Facebook Live um, to, to, to to the broadcast to you guys. Even though we are we are putting it all out there um, on live.awesomecast.net, it's a great place. To, you know, No matter what, if we decide uh, maybe the Facebook Live isn't working out for us and we want to move to something else... Um, you know that that's an option, and, and you know that that's the that's the home of where that can be, and and a chat room and everything. But we are keeping an eye as well over on the Facebook. If you have any comments in the chat over there um, throughout the evening, and I'm you know, I'm still kind of getting that out there on Facebook right now. That's why I'm looking over off camera a little bit. Uh, please support us Patreon.com/slash AwesomeCast. Thanks to our good friends uh, Mike Fedora, the Mike Fedora Show, supporting us at the one dollar level. Still for a long time, he's one of our former executive producers, uh, but still keeping it in there, hanging in there, supporting the show. Thank you so much for him. Check out at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter uh, for everything that he's got going on as well. He's creating some stuff on the internet too, um, and, and that's something that we're um, um, you know uh, have out there so you guys can support the show as we uh, kind of grow and make these other uh, new shows and new uh, new new opportunities here for the Awesome Cast to become a, a cool, bigger, newer show john chichilla i want to know your awesome thing of my, the week my awesome thing of the week i just found this today and usually i get an email from this company <clears throat> so mine comes to us from i'm guessing they're they're, they're actually pronounced and adding it adding it adding it Adonit. so they're a maker of lots of styli or styluses depending on what you think is correct um, they've recently announced the snap, the snap, the snap. Now be careful because wait, wait, wait. Oh, I the see where we're going with this. Because I was a little worried when you said the snap because I knew somebody else is doing something snap. But but get get a little further than that. So 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 this is a stylus that will actually works with Android and iOS. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is when I first read it, it said Bluetooth, and I'm like, hmm. They're going to have a Bluetooth stylus that works with uh, an uh, that's targeted at a phone. Right. Um, the right. iPhone. Um, but the Bluetooth piece of it isn't like a palm rejection technology like you see in, in, in most Bluetooth stylus devices. This actually, the button on the device actually allows you to trigger your camera shutter. And then you can obviously use the stylus to then doodle on pictures or pretty much do doodle on anything on your device. The device is about 
as tall as an, a typical iPhone. Um, okay. So it'll fit kind of nicely behind the device. Um, it's definitely this is definitely targeted at Snapchat. Um, I'd actually like to use this to mark up photos I take. Uh, I think it'll come in nice for that. It has a 1.9 millimeter tip, so it's 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 pretty decent for that that kind of fine that that fine line or or fine sketch that you may want to do. Um, and coming in at a $34.99 price point, I think it's it's perfect for a, for a lot of people um, to, to pick this up, use it on their Android device, use it on their iOS device. <clears throat> Obviously, a lot of people are carrying around other snap-on type devices like tripods and lenses. Um, I think this is another little gadget to add to your arsenal. Um, it does charge over micro USB. Um, so you can pretty much plug it into anything. The only thing, like I said, Bluetooth is really used for is to, it can snap the shutter. I don't know if you've seen those, like, I think they're like 10 bucks at Target. You can get in there just meant as a remote shutter um, for your device. This is this, that's okay. what that button does. And then you can use the the stylus to, to kind of doodle. It does have a flat look, which I don't know if I'm going to be that thrilled with. I'm interested to try it out. Um, but it's also magnetic, so it snaps to the back of any metal phone, which I thought was pretty cool. Nice. That seems cool. So, it, so it's more than just Snapchat, right? I right. Mean, you can use it for a bit, but they're marketing for this is something for you to be a better doodler at yes. Snapchat, right? <laughs> and and I, I'm surprised these types, we didn't see more of these types of devices when, what was the the draw what was the drawing thing where you would find someone random and it would give you a word and you had to kind of doodle out the picture oh uh oh geez doodle doodle it or something what right no i can't remember the name of the app now. that's how memorable it was it was, was huge but it was it, but it was kind of like a hangman type version you could you, you had to draw a picture it was like win lose or draw but it, i'm surprised we didn't see more of these devices back then um but this device looks just as nice the one thing I will say about any of these devices, just to just to keep in mind, um, is the the they do make kind of a clicking noise against the glass because you actually have kind of like a metal against a glass tapping. Um, so it's not perfectly quiet. Uh, the quietest of devices I've seen is the Galaxy Note stylus is definitely quiet um, and quite accurate. The Apple Pencil, which I'm surprised Apple hasn't gotten their pencil to work with the phone yet. I think that'll probably be something next for them but these these devices do kind of make a, a tapping noise as you draw lift and tap on the on the glass um but this would also work with any with any pieces of the interface too so obviously if you wanted to use this for navigation purposes it would also work awesome go check it out it, it's available now it is available now check it out hopefully mine will be shipping within the next 24 hours awesome give us a hands-on when that comes in definitely so mine is uh, obviously we've been using Facebook Live, and I've, I've you know some things I, I've kind of come to the realization we need to use Facebook Live to so people can find us. Right, mm -hmm. there's a lot of discovery happening there, and it feels like it's more than what's happening on YouTube. But it's also talking to uh, we're looking at on business sides too, not just the broadcasting, entertainment, discussion, podcasty stuff like we do here. Right. So uh, I've talked about I probably talked about in the past. Uh, you know, so a lot of my traveling and podcast work I've been doing with a uh, uh, SAE, specifically the Baja competitions. Right. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I got a message that said, "Hey, let's we really want to do Facebook Lives because they have a big registration day." And this, in so there's a separate one for Baja. There's a separate one for Formula competition, and then there's an aero design. Um, and SAE kind of a big deal in these in these spaces and and. Students, uh, Elon Musk has mentioned, uh, I think, the Aero Design competition specifically uh, uh, about like these are people we look at to to you know hire for SpaceX, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have all that quoting uh, uh, right, but anyways, so there's a big registration day. These are popular events. They sell out in minutes. They they, they the, when I was hired for the for the uh, uh, contract, they, they talked about how this 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 sells out in like 15 minutes every year. And we don't need, you know, they don't need to find, get more people on. They just need to communicate better. So this is part of that, part of that process. The servers go down. It's just like, this is the one time a year they, you know, it, it's like buying an iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you go, they, they're doing it. There's like apparently um, banks of students for each school that they pull together, their team and friends in, in the computer labs to try to get in to make sure they get their spot. There's only like 100 teams and only so many wait lists and, and everything like that. 
Um, so this was a cool tool that we use. You can check it out. If you look up, uh, again, SAE Baja or SAE Formula or SAE Aero Design on Facebook, you'll find their pages. And, and Amanda over there does a fantastic job with all the social media. And you can see some of the videos that we've worked on in the past. And you can check out if I can find it here. Oh, they're actually got a lot of discussion because a lot of interesting stuff happened today uh, around the registration. So they're like, because as they're going, they they yell out amongst the, you know, where, where they're at in the office, how many people have registered, when it's sold out and everything. And uh, it, and, and, and it, you know, it, it's a pretty exciting stock market-y kind of thing that they do every year. Uh, so we got to do that, and sh she's talking with them, especially with there were server problems, which there was a server problem one day. Uh, so we were able to talk through and say, hey, guys, this is what's going on. This is what we know what's going on. Hang in there. Um, if you're having problems with this, we'll help you with that. They're able to directly, hey, did I get it in the list because it's not loading because the server is getting pounded. So they can't confirm their order. So there was somebody sitting somewhere else there in the chat room saying, yeah, we see you on the list. No, we, you didn't get in. Yeah, you're on the list. And dealing with that. It was an awesome, like, it's 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 pretty much like the most vital 20 minutes for each competition of the year, other than the competition itself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there's a lot going into that. So uh, I, I went up there, the Cranberry, at their offices, and we, we got to hang out for, for all these registration days and uh, and do that. And, and I think just the communication, having the banter back and forth with a lot of the, the, the kids that are, and this is college, this is college kids mm -hmm. at this point. This is a collegiate competition, right? Um, and, uh, it, it was really cool to, 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 you know, have that communication directly. These are the faces they see at registration when they come later, um, um, you know, April through June next year when these competitions happen, actually one as early as March, if I recall, uh, cause I think the aero design happens in Florida in March, late March. But, uh, but I think it was, it was, uh, um, a really good demonstration of what you can do as a company. For Facebook Live, these guys had a really good, this is an event that happens. You guys have never seen this side of what we deal with here. Um, they said multiple times, it's like, you know, this is this is a thing that if, if you guys all hit refresh, we uh, 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 we think we're going, coming under an internet attack. The servers shut down, and they actually shut down the internet in the entire facility. And it's a big office building, right? Not just their department. Mm -hmm. Everybody at SE apparently, um, as as a security precaution when that triggers. Um, but that was really cool. And even like in certain points, uh, we were able to co go around the office a little bit and chat with um, you know, other other members of the team. Um, you know that that had some stuff like, hey, here's you know, a uh, uh, Bob, who uh, Bob Seckler, who's like you know, uh, one of, one of the heads of the department, uh, told us about this car uh, that it's on the video. If you're on the video version now that apparently the University of Akron did that competed in both the Formula and Baja competitions in the same year. Like they, they dual built it for both mm -hmm. uh, back in like the, the mid nineties, you know, real cool little things like that, or even talking to people directly about what's going on with, with sponsorships, with your schools, what things to look out for. Um, so a really cool experience there. And again, looking back at that, if you want to kind of take a peek, um, one of the competitions, well, uh, several of the competitions broke shattered records for how quick they sold out, um, including like one was the competition that usually sells out, sold out in like two minutes, two minutes, two of the, the events today for Baja sold out in two to three minutes. And uh, the third in 12, their fastest sellout last year was 14 minutes. It beat all three of them beat that. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. Um, so there again, you know, something really cool that's going on with that. You know, I, I, I think I think, you know, if you haven't yet, if you're a business, if you have something going on, we've talked over on Indie Mayhem show and maybe a little wrestling mayhem show about Facebook Live last night on WWE Raw. One of the wrestlers was ringside and did a Facebook Live sitting there in the arena in uh, in Oakland uh, uh, on Facebook Live. With a match going on behind them, that's happening on your TV on USA Network. That's perfect. <laughs> it's it, it's a, this great, cool, interactive kind of thing. And again, you know, obviously we're producing it through Wirecast and sending it out to you um, on Facebook Live. This is definitely you know an iPhone that we're taking around. I got a little Joby pod so we can sit it sit there when we're just sitting there talking to her. Um, but again, you know, help steady things when we do get up and walk around uh, uh, the, the 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 offices. Uh, so again, really cool kind of use of that you know i hope it kind of sparks some ideas for people out there looking to uh maybe maybe uh, get some use out of this so uh, facebook live and how we're using it is definitely my awesome thing of the week this week so so do you see 
obviously I, I see a lot of people just running it off their phone. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. It seems like this is one of those things that allows someone to easily get there's there's low barrier to entry and you can constantly grow because mm-hmm. there's other things like the open was it open broadcast software OBS. obs yeah there's a lot of obs being used you can you can use that to kind of broadcast and, and bring in some additional and you can use it with feature facebook. functionality yeah you can use it with facebook so so again it's a free software it's not as robust as a wirecast but that's what when we were broadcasting well we use wirecast here but if you look at the other videos which are on the Sorgatron Media Facebook. Facebook? No, on our YouTube. Because um, we did, we also did Facebook Live just with our phones uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 for Sorgatron Media for Podcrawl. But if you look at our YouTube for Sorgatron Media, there's a lot of those videos. The, the Drinking Partners show, Bold Pittsburgh, some of the other ones. Uh, Mike Sasson show. Mike Sasson, really cool. Um, recommend all those podcasts, by the way. Look them up. River's Edge, River Talk. Um by the way, River's Edge, I forgot to mention at the beginning, River's Edge were 8 a.m. Uh, Thursday mornings on the River's Edge, VGH.com. I can't believe I missed it. Um, but, uh, but you know, you can put a logo in the corner. You can put a couple shots together, right? Um, Friday night, where we're using OBS. Um, we're using Looking for Groups Rig, right? Mm-hmm. And they're using OBS, and they put logo in the corner and everything like that right there in OBS and then put two screens that we wanted to stream out, and that's how we did it. Mm-hmm. Also awesome. Hey, thanks for looking for group for supporting that uh, uh, N64 No Mercy uh, tournament we did for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Go check that out. We actually have that posted. All those streams are posted at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We did live wrestling style commentary um, with, with uh, Papa Lunchbox uh, coming back to do that with us. And they, they put up this big they projection big screen and we cooked this N64 up to and everything. It was insane. It was so much fun. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look for the post over there for that. Can you put like the lower third title in there and stuff like that you with OBS? can but I, I don't think there's a lot of functionality that i can you know like here i can switch back and forth a little bit like that mm-hmm. uh he did have a well he he had that functionality because they're going through a black magic switcher okay so he's setting up kind of the inputs because the games were coming in through one of those aver media um um you know game capture devices basically mm-hmm. like a usb game capture device and then the the other shots were shots of us, the announcers and shots of the guys playing were coming through the black magic thing, which is a, just a, a box that handles the video and switches it. And mm-hmm. he's switching that on a surface pro. Like he's pulling up the software because the software to switch actually operates over the network. Okay. So he's sitting on the Wi-Fi on surface pro walking around, switching the shot as, awesome. things, as things made, made sense. And, and we have the similar system for work hard. That we're using for live streaming with the black magic box and everything, but we just have a Mac Pro sitting there because it's doing the switching plus OBS all in one place, mm-hmm. right? Um, so yeah, I, I think that's it's a really cool uh, it's a really cool functionality. It's, it, I love I love how they have a little bit different spin than what we've been doing on work hard with the same hardware basically. I, I love how they split those out to like OBS and the capture is happening on this computer. And then the switching happening over on this computer so the, they don't cross the streams, mm-hmm. which gives me some ideas, things I might be trying very soon with my touchscreen computers I might have lying around. <clears throat> so <laughs> I've wanted I've wanted touchscreen like Wirecast switching in here for a long time. And like that, like that, that really got me going on that kind of idea. So. Now, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun streaming stuff happening in the last week uh, with our clients, with some of our shows. Um, so I think it's been a really cool, uh, inventive, fun uh, um, um, kind of, you know, new stuff that we've been trying out. So um, from there. All right. Let's give a shout out to our friends over at Slice on Broadway. That's the reason Chilla makes sure he gets here at least every other week. Yes. Or maybe that's why he only comes in here every other week, because he says, I can't have that much pizza. That's true. Because I'm I, trying to lose a few pounds. Yes. But, but the, the pizza, the pizza keeps it coming. It's the Awesome Cast Diet Plan because it's so good because it's our friend Slice on Broadway right here in Beachview. They, they, it's to the point where they see us pull up in front of the... I saw a guy grab a pizza, run across the kitchen window, and then like meet my wife at the door with it. Because I had told her as she left, I'm like, make sure to give them a high five. <laughs> and gave him a high five at the door, handed off the pizza, and we're good to go. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome people over there. Slice on Broadway, of course, for us, it's right here on, on Broadway. The original in Beachview. The Beachview right along the tracks here. 
Of course, second location, Carnegie PA, right on Mean Street. I almost went down there when we had to go down there for a for a stop a, a, a couple weeks ago. But I'm like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work today. Doesn't work with the schedule. You already had dinner. Don't go to Slice again. Oh, there's do. No, there's, no do. Wrong, there's nothing there's wrong. No, with second, there's nothing wrong with Second, second Slice. Second Z's. Second Z's for some Slice. It's it's worthwhile, isn't it? Um, and, of course, they're, they're in the location. Of the, the baseball season is over, but I think they're still open in the offseason. Uh, PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, down there on the North Shore in Pittsburgh. A lot of you guys here in the region, or if you're outside coming into Pittsburgh, go check them out. You got three options there. Get to one of them. If you're downtown, they're right across the bridge. They're the first thing in the ballpark along the side there on uh, Federal Street, is that? Um, as, you, as you cross the, the Roberto Clemente Bridge. Were they closed for off-season? I don't think they are, because the one before them um, wasn't. Okay. We would go there in the winter a lot. I, went, I, met, I met some friends that work in the north side there a lot. Um, but no, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Thank you for supporting the Pittsburgh podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza for so long here. Check them out. PGH underscore slice on Twitter, Facebook, and the Instagrams. And you'll be hungry too. Let them know who sent you. And give them a high five. If you go in there and you get some food, give them a high five and say the, give them a high five and say the awesome cast sent me. Can't wait to hear it if that happens. Uh, so please, well, at least one of you guys out there got to do that. All right, let's. Uh, so you got some apps of the week going on. I, over do, here. I do have. So it's 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 all around a single app, and that single app being Channels. And they came out with version two o, which took took the app from the i the iPhone iPad platform, and took it onto Apple TV. But what Channels is, is it's a TV app, for your Apple TV or iOS device, and it ties into any of the HD home run hardware. Mm-hmm. So so before we get into what the HD home home run hardware is, Channels gives you a full guide. Pretty nice. They, they give you an interface of what's on now with kind of like a thumbnail view. They do have a full guide. And then obviously there's some settings in there to, to set up the application. To me, bringing this from the phone and tablet really goes beyond and, and putting it on the Apple TV makes perfect sense. You now pretty much have a cable box in mm-hmm. every one of your rooms mm-hmm. uh, where the cable is coming from or where your over the air signal is coming from. And the reason I like this for over the air is you can take any of these HD home run devices and you can put them in the room where you get the best reception, which makes sense for me. Cause I know I have the issue. I don't get ABC on the main TV cause it's downstairs, right. but on the smaller antenna and the little converter box, I do get it upstairs most of the time. So you could take one of these HD home run devices and, and put it up there, and then it would actually broadcast TV across your network um, to any device that wanted to, to tune in. Um, the HD home run devices, you can get them in two and three channel um, or two, two and three tuner devices. So you could actually plug in and, and it'll, it'll pull in two channels at a time and then stream them out to your devices. They also actually built a, they call it the HD Home Run Prime, and it actually has a cable card slot in the back. So if you have Verizon Fios and you called up Verizon and said, hey, I don't want to buy your cable box, or I don't want to rent your cable box, I just want a cable card. They'll actually send you this card, and it's what actually does the decoding. And then you could plug this device into your network, and then you could it would, it would provide you with three tuners across your network for cable is that what this um, m card is in the back yes okay so like i have a tivo box mm-hmm. so i don't have verizon's cable box i have a tivo because i get a lot more functionality out of that with things like amazon prime and netflix and, and it has a lot of applications um there's a youtube thing on there, there, there there's a lot to the tivo piece i actually called verizon and say hey i need you to send me a card they put a card in the mail, you take the card, you throw it in the back of the box, and you hit a button and boom, all your all you get all your cha- all your channels in um over that over over your service. Um they channels does realize they're they're a little shy on the um DVR functionality. Mm-hmm. They will actually the, the the HD home run boxes will buffer 90 minutes. So if you're watching a sporting event or you 
tuned to a channel and you walk away, you can get up rewind, pause, etc. Um, HD Home Run also has DVR software. Uh, it does run sixty bucks, um, and that gets you one year of TV guide for, which, for just the software. For just, but it, what it does is it allows you to DVR anything off of the home runs because you need that info. You need that information connection right mm -hmm. in order to do that. Yeah. Now you can do the HD Home Run when the one year TV guide subscription runs out. You just let it lapse. And you just have to know, okay, I want to record whatever. The CW is like channel 19, I think. I want to record channel 19 at 9 o'clock on Wednesday so I can It's get... one of those things when you set up, like, well, I know Arrow is on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock. Right. Yeah, you set it up. I'm sure you can do a repeated thing. It's like, do I really need the spiffy, you know, stuff that comes up? Especially if you're just doing over the air. Mm -hmm. How many channels are you really dealing with at that point? Right. Listen, I want to get both, both episodes of Empty Nest every day on Laugh at 5 and 5.30. Yep, because I don't want to miss B. Arthur. And the cool you thing do. you can do too is when you and I, I had this set up for a while. Um, you can have HD Home Run record to a directory, and then or do the automatic add to iTunes record to that directory, and then you can have iTunes sync your iPad wirelessly to all of your videos that are then automatically added to iTunes, and you always have all your TV kind of on the go. I was doing that with Arrow for a long time. Um, works extremely well. But it, Channels channels looks like it's pretty cool, and it looks like they're not going anywhere. The, like I said, the version 2.0. Bringing it to the Apple TV, which I think is huge, and when they get DVR functionality, I think it's going to be really cool. This is something that came up a couple weeks ago as a, oh, hey, because I, I think this is one thing that Plex now interfaces with as well. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they, they interface with the HD Home Run equipment. And there was a good point. I think Cord Killers mentioned this. It was like, and I remember I looked it up. I'm like, am I looking at the right one? And they're like, it, it, it's unfortunate that the company name is Silicon Dust because it feels like you're you're dealing with something shady, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of like the people at, at Comic-Con or Wizard World that uh, had the this is an Android, Android device that's 150 bucks and you could just watch every show for a movie for free. That's completely been out in the theaters. No, it's completely cool and legal and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's like, you know, that kind of shadiness that goes on with these devices, right? Um, you know, it, it's it's interesting. It is really kind of curious um, uh, with this. But but again, it, it's something that's legit. It's it's something that, you know, works and and, and sounds like it's a really good option. So you get one? You getting one? I have an I have two HD home runs already. Oh, okay. I don't have the Prime, so I can get OTA. I can get over the air. Um, I am thinking about getting the app because I have I would actually put the in rooms where I don't get good reception or I, I just want to be able to take kind of Apple TVs from room to room. Mm -hmm. They're a lot easier to move than antennas. Mm -hmm. um, I can kind of do that. Awesome. I want to talk about Amazon. You want to talk about Amazon? Can we talk about Amazon? There's some interesting local news about Amazon, actually. So I think we talked about this in the past. There's uh, maybe you're not getting your Amazon packages from a typical delivery method like a FedEx, a UPS, or the the, uh, the United States Postal System service. It's the big sure. white van with the A on the side. Big white van, not just the big white van with the A. Let me get into that. But articles going around. There was a, I think the the originally no, it was Dave Highfield. That um that 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 came here and did the story with me about the uh, Google Glass when that came in. Mm -hmm. Uh of course, doing the story that that also ended up in Upgroup. Upgroup had the best headline on it: Amazon deliveries freaking people the f out. Hello, Upgroup. Upgroup, by the way, something interesting. In front of uh, other other shows, Wrestling Mayhem show, Justin Labar now writing for them left the Trib to go write for Upgroup about pro wrestling. Hmm. Take note. Um, anyways. So, yeah, apparently, we so you can sign up for this. It's kind of like being an Uber driver because you can do Uber deliveries and stuff. And you sign up as a delivery person and, and it talks about how to do that. And it's like you can make like 15 or 25 bucks an hour or something like that, right? Um, so, yeah, there's the van with the A. The, the magnetic A on the side is the one that I've seen. But uh, apparently, you know, there's no real dress code for this. You know, it, it's just a guy. Uh, and, and so, South Hills. Stay at home moms, presumably. I'm going to make a generalization there. I actually, I think they were described as such in the article. Um, we're getting concerned because they would be doing outside something outside 
A person will stop in front of their house in an unmarked car, just a car, just somebody's car. They get out and go to hand you a package. No identification, no anything else, no big A on the side. And they were concerned that this was some kind of scam. You know, admittedly in the interview, the, the lady was like, well, I, it w- I was expecting something, so I wasn't too worried, but I'm still kind of concerned who's delivering my package? And again, Amazon has not really told us this is happening. Mm -hmm. You just like one day you're like, like I noticed first because I picked up the package and I I took, I like, who's this from? Is this from, is this one of my deliveries or is this from something else going on? Cause I, I I do other deliveries for, for work. Um, and I want to make sure that something's not coming back, you know, and everything. So I I always inspect the addresses real quick. I'm always curious because not everything always comes from Amazon either directly when I order on Amazon. And I look and I'm like, there's no USPS. There's no familiar like markings for FedEx or anything on here. I'm like, how did that get there? And it said like really abbreviated that basically the words um, um, Amazon shipping or Amazon service or something. on. I'm like, Amazon has their own shipping. And, and they ship enough. It probably makes sense. It does. Absolutely. And, and then and then as we go, as we know, I have a, a uh, Raspberry Pi security camera system in here. And, and I just have it on when I'm working down here up in the office and I keep an eye on what's going on out front, you know, mm-hmm. and and make make sure those, ner- those na- neighbors are being haved. Um, but I'll see the truck pull up. I've seen it on uh, making deliveries for other people on the street too. the, the, the van, mm-hmm. the, 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 the indiscreet white panel van that always makes you concerned, but with the A. Looks like a paint truck. It does look like a paint truck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my my dad my granddad was an electrician and had the same kind of van just with ladders on top. But anyways, um, so, uh, yeah, so this is happening and you can sign up for it and it's here in Pittsburgh and I imagine other, especially metropolitan areas where. Do you think it's any metropolitan area or do you think it's anywhere where they have distribution centers? I think, yeah. I'm gonna guess it's near a distribution ju- center. Cause right. I'm guessing they're pulling up to the distribution center, picking up a bunch of stuff and driving off i'm guessing and they're kind of shipping things internally from center to the center right yeah i'm guessing you you don't have they're not shipping a a boatload of boxes via ups to your house and then Mm -hmm. having you distribute them uh according to the article over on upgroup amazon is starting amazon or they started amazon flex is what the service was called last year Mm -hmm. private drivers use their own cars to deliver packages um according to its website people who agree to make amazon deliveries can earn from 18 to 25 dollars an hour so there you go. There you go. It's a thing. And you can sign up for it. If you're an, if you're an enterprising individual looking for uh, something like this, you know, that's, uh, that's something you can do. So um, there you go, Amazon. <laughs> Meanwhile, and I don't think I actually put this in a note, so I'm going to go grab this off of our Twitter feed. Um, Amazon is also looking to open their own grocery stores. I feel like this has been discussed in the past, that that's, yeah, but I thought this was going to be a delivery service kind of like zing pass zing basket by the way i'm using a lot of zing basket it's like <laughs> i've used it like five times since it came out like a month ago um i even did like the big a big enough um um buy from it that you get over the 50 dollar limit and don't even have to pay the three dollar service fee i mean still tip them please mm-hmm. i mean they're, they're, they're giving you 50 dollars worth of groceries and that you didn't have to cart out and deal with all that crap in the market district right but um, they're they're. Uh, I love the article on this because I think it was, uh, I think it was Business Insider. I'm going to try to get this here. Um, or like, yeah, Walmart and everybody else should be really, really scared. Amazon's about to open a bunch of grocery stores and uh, Kroger's, Walmart, uh, Whole Foods sh- should be terrified. Amazon Fresh, we're aware of that. It's a delivery delivery vans that already have uh, you know kind of warehouse deliveries uh, out there in California. Um, but yeah, if, so they get into this in the article, um, they actually, it's an actual walk in grocery store. And I, I noticed, I love their note is, uh, from the outside, it looks like a Chipotle restaurant and it's going to be mostly like it's groceries. It's, it's perishable groceries, stuff like milk, deli meats, produce, right? Not, you know, you, you could always get like, you know, boxed food dog foods go stuff like that through amazon but this is very specifically like the fresh product like fresh stuff yeah so um really really interesting so i say so we're set to launch a drive up grocery for uh for amazon 
crazy. When, <clears throat> when I look at places like Pittsburgh in comparison to Youngstown or, or other cities, I, I definitely see there's definitely room for competition in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. So I could definitely see this that's working its way in and giving giving other companies a, a run for their money. Um, I don't know if it can go nationwide everywhere, but it, to me, it just makes sense. That dense population, you get to serve mm-hmm. more people. That's why that's why the, the, the grocery deliveries and everything else makes sense, right? It strengthens the brand. And I'm curious what happens because uh, uh, market districts are already doing curbside delivery, as in instead of going into market district Giant Eagle, uh, grocery stores and saying, you know, I'm going to walk around and put everything in a cart and wheel it up and spend the time to do that. You go on their site, much like a Zing Basket, say, I want to buy this, 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 and this, put it in the cart, pay for it. I want to pick it up at this time. You have to do it like a day in advance. And I want to drive out there when I have time. They put it in my thing. I go back. I still have to drive out to the grocery store. And the one that does it is not terribly convenient for me to go to, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, geographically. Versus the you yeah, just have the person drive up and whatever you know even if it's not like I'm not getting store brands like they're not available there's no Zing Basket store brand or generic or anything like that but for what you save and going out in your time and everything it just makes sense it just makes so much sense and and if the Amazon does it then I kind of want a Zing Basket to do well because it's uh, fairly local it's from the Vocelli guy which Vocelli is a local company mm-hmm. Vocelli Pizza and I know they're basically not nationwide but they're regionally out there a bit like I know there's some in Florida and stuff um, and some other regions but uh, but still like a fairly local company is is behind this and, mm-hmm. and I want to see that one grow and worry about them versus Amazon but I like to see that there might be some competition here mm-hmm. so I'm like well you don't have X like I, uh, I was like I want to make dinner I want to spend 30 bucks on takeout so I spent 15 bucks, 12 bucks, got some spaghetti sauce and some garlic bread. I had one choice of spaghetti sauce and one choice of garlic bread, but we were good to go. Mm-hmm. The brands are like ragu and some Texas toast. Now I'm getting hungry. Let me make sure to pass me that pizza after this. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and it worked and I had dinner. You know, my wife's ordered uh, things several times that she's needed because she's like she's baking something you know, for something. And, and it's like, ah, I need chocolate chips. I need this. I need, I need flour. And, and instead of stopping what she's doing or sending me <laughs> up to do it, it, when I'm busy working on whatever, or, um, and, uh, and, and just, it happens, you know, I, I, I think I've worried. It's like, this is the thing that makes me lazy, but you know, what makes me feel lazy is the drive through at sheets. When I say, when I, you know, because you go through and you have your order and everything, you drive up, you're waiting for it and you put it, I want a Fago moon mist. And then I literally watched the lady, the poor girl. And I know it's her job. I know it's her job. And most of the things are right there, like a little like cooler of Pepsi products and stuff. So, so they don't have to do this, but like sitting there and watching her walk across the store, like in a <laughs> beeline from where I was at the window across the store, pick up a Fago moon mist, 99 cents. 24 ounces, good deal. Um, out of the cooler, walk back to me, and then give me. Then my NTO stuff was done by then. Hand me that stuff. I feel like such a freaking moron for making her do that. I'm too. It's one thing I have a drive through. You make food, and I can, you know, and, and we're good to go. But like, I seriously just made you walk across the store and do do that. Like, I just feel horrible. I'm like, I'm going to start tipping you at the drive through and I don't think that's standard at all. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think that is standard. But if I, like, watch you do that, I'm like, I feel like a moron. Here's two bucks. I, I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. And now my 99 cent fake was <laughs> is more than I expected to. So, I don't know. I, I You know, one of those things. You know, but it, it is a time, but you it is pay a time for saver. Conven- We're you busy. pay yeah. for convenience. What is it Gary Vaynerchuk said? that the, the stuff like Uber and Lyft are so important because you're not paying for a ride. You're not paying for X. You're paying for time. Mm-hmm. you're paying for i don't need to deal with that and somebody else deals with the traffic the time i can sit on my phone and, and answer emails while this is happening um well that's that's the whole reason that that i'll i i taking and will probably forever continue to take public transportation when possible it's is, time is, to yourself it's time to myself it's i can throw on a podcast i can open up my email and i can get stuff done i, yeah. I can't do that well, I guess I could do it while driving, but not safely. <laughs> you shouldn't be, but yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that's that's really, really important because the biggest thing that kills me when I have a job, like today, well, I had to go to Cranberry today. I have some other things I've been doing to make those a little more beneficial to my time. Um, but 
that's a half an hour I'm sitting in the car. Then I'm like, I'm not making money right now. I'm not doing things that, that you know, as a business person, right? Because mm-hmm. it, it's on the job. Like, this is dead time. This is transportation time. And and in certain aspects, in certain aspects, and, and, and depending on the job, I, I charge for that. Like you, it took me X time to get to you. That's X time I could have been doing something else, right? Mm-hmm. You know. But if it's you know something like this, you know, that's why I order everything from Amazon. You know, it'll be here the next day if I need it, right? I don't have to go to Best Buy and be like, "Do you have this thing? Do you, do you are you sure? Do you have this thing?" You know, I, I mean, saw I saw it on your inventory. It says you have this thing, but yeah, where yeah. is this thing? Yeah, where is this thing? <laughs> you you want also. You know, you know, it also pisses me off when you pre-order, like, I don't know, I got ink or something, right? Or whatever it was. And you go up to the front desk, you have your stuff, and I think they've changed it. By the way, I, I think Best Buy has changed this by now, because I don't think this happens in this method. But I would go in there, pre-ordered, good to go, and then they would go to the back of the store. I don't know if it was the warehouse in the back, or they went literally went to, like, the, the shelf, to grab the thing mm-hmm. like they didn't pre grab it so it was ready when i was i was there i mean what did i really wait you know in the long run right and i i didn't have to go in and i don't know where stuff is and everything but still it's just kind of you know again you feel like an idiot because you're like well i could have done that mm-hmm. and again you're guaranteeing yes there's definitely one there yes i'm not wasting a trip because it's right by that market district that's a bitch for me to get to right um you know but but still no. And even I even look at Walmart and like cite the store. That kind of makes sense, right? I'm going out that way anyway. So let's let's make sure I'm not wandering around for for 20 minutes looking for something. I just have to go straight to the beeline to the back of the store. Here's my thing. Thank you. And I take off. That's it. All it's missing is a drive through Walmart. Yeah. And that's why Home Depot does that too. And you can you can order and uh, you go onto their website and you you can create a whole list of everything that you want. They go pull it. It's like the market. It it's like the, the market the store. It, it, they bring it up to the front of the store, and then I mean, it has a tag on it. You That's walk a, up. And I check don't out. need to look for. I don't need to look for your food. Food of the world's uh, uh, aisle at Market District to figure out where the teriyaki sauce is. Somebody else does that for me. That knows the the floor plan. Because mm-hmm. we, we, I don't know. One time we were like, we're gonna do this right. We're gonna grocery shop like like regular regular adult human beings, and we spent so uh, like an entire Sunday at Market District. And it was so tiring. <laughs> And so much I didn't do instead of that that I could have. And I so first world problems, by the way. I know. I know. Okay. But uh but still, like this is this is the world of conveniences that we're living in here. Wow, this is this got off on a way crazy tangent than I expected it to. All because of Amazon Flex. Oh, Amazon. Amazon flexing and freaking the F out people in the South Hills. I've been seeing them for a while. I never Never caught me off guard. I never thought anything of it. But but I can understand. I mean, that's a norm, mm-hmm. right? Like the delivery person is the norm and they changed the norm. And it's just like, oh, wait, this is what's happening. So one other thing I think we need to talk about here definitely before we get out of here is Oculus. Kind of made some waves this week. There's just two things happening. First of all, I believe did the PlayStation VR officially release. It sounds like it has. It's being reviewed. It's, it's I, I've I've seen a lot of reviews, so it's it's obviously it was in the Best Buy again the other day. The, yeah. You know, um, it, it is it's so so that's on the table, and it looks like frankly, it looks like because the games, even though they they've said there's an insane amount of games that are released for, it, and they're doing stuff like Resident Evil and everything, still the people that are demoing stuff on PlayStation VR. Are the things that we've played on Oculus and Vive over at Looking for Group, the uh, Job Simulator, the um, the um, um, No, I expect you to die. Uh, I, I think that's that's the one. Um, keep talking and nobody keep, blows up. Uh, keep. I don't know if they have that one though. Uh, we got to play that a little bit ago. That was fun uh, for the first time. But um, I, I played both sides of it too on the Gear VR. So uh, we need to have a don't explode night with with some people. It'll be a team. Next uh, coffee, maybe we'll do that. Sounds like fun, but um, so Oculus uh, throwing their hat on. I'm hoping looking more a little more into the VR, uh, PlayStation VR stuff. I wish I had time when I went to Best Buy the other day. Um, but they had this is part. What's it? This is part of just Facebook's general Connect event, I believe, right? That I don't know. But but it was a lot of it was VR heavy. So one thing that was I thought was very interesting in this, um, Oculus is apparently working on a cheaper 
um, wireless VR headset. And the explanation from the Zuck was, uh, okay, we have the good high-end stuff like Oculus, right? That's attached to a PC and everything. And even Oculus themselves, let's stay in the same ecosystem, has the Gear VR that you and I have both experienced with. A lot of people can get their hands on or, or have been around people that have. Uh, again, I'm probably talking anecdotally, but still. So they think, Oculus thinks, and this is not something that they have anything other than prototypes of, so they're very clear, listen, we don't have a product to even show you yet, but this is something we think is going. They think there's room for a standalone, not with the cell phone, not with the other the other things, um, kind of middle-of-the-road standalone system. I believe it. Oh, I totally believe it. I believe it. I think it makes a lot of sense. Well, And I think if you pull back and you look at the... The daydream type device powered off your cell phone, the Galaxy Gear VR. If you start to pull out the all the phone pieces and all the other technology for everything else, you could probably pare down that device to have a decent battery life and be decently powerful. Now, I don't I don't see why this is out of the realm of possibility, and I don't think it should be overly expensive. Yeah, I, I just I just don't see. And, and I, I think there's definitely people that would buy it because they don't have to plug their cell phone into it all the time. Like maybe you can, they can get a little bit of extra battery life out of it. Um, you could potentially buy more than one. I mean, it, it, I, I just I definitely see in the future there's definitely kids. They're going to want this multiple kids and in, in one family wanting it. You're parents probably aren't all going to buy them gear vrs a samsung galaxy cell phone multiple pcs and a rift bot. i mean i i definitely see why someone would want this and and possibly more than one it's difficult yeah even even that whole dinky dream and and gear thing like this is like this is still enthusiast i know they kind of made it easier a little bit by making it a very consumer thing but man i'm so glad a note didn't explode on somebody's face by the way um <laughs> Oh, that's when I scary. they disabled. So there's an Oculus update that came out for Samsung devices. So it will no longer even run on the Note Seven. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, but the hazard so they did there. release a they that's, did release a patch for that. Jeez, you just get a face full of burning acid. But uh, yeah, jeez, it's like a saw torture device. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, that was that was going a little off. But um. But no, I, yeah, no, I think that's, that's completely an option for that. Uh, they played a little bit with... I, did you see much of the video from this event? I did not. So one of the interesting things they did was a uh, kind of interactive, uh, you know, kind of avatar system, which in my mind turns you into a Muppet a little bit, like the reactions. And I guess it was playing off of like, my eyebrows moved in this way. Oh, this is a happy expression. So the actual cartoon avatar will actually like kind of not overreact but accentuate that a little mm-hmm. bit right um and uh, presuming this was pretty much working you know pretty pretty much working the way you would think um I'll try and find some images of this for you guys on video uh i don't know i don't know if this is like it seems partially gimmicky but um but 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 still like okay that could work that's not as awkward as what i experienced in alt space vr right where you have you're this weird robot or avatar thing that doesn't make any sense right it can actually look like you a little bit maybe um you know kind of a cartoonize you it is a little weird that they're floating torsos that freaks me out to be quite honest (laughs) uh very yeah no don't look down that 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 freaks me out no the people in front of you like this picture of of zuck in in this image for you guys over on the video i know i chilla doesn't have video this evening i'm sorry about that um you know it's uh it's in the uh eight, eight stories uh eight important stories for oculus or facebook or whatever it was uh but no it's uh i think it's interesting they're they're forward thinking oh by the way those controllers the 200 dollars controllers that really make the vibe stand out as far as i'm concerned um those finally are going to ship on uh in december 6th uh which finally you'll have parity there man those make all the difference new headphones new in-ear headphones a little more comfy for you guys um i love oculus avatars brings vaporware to the masses (laughs) is their thing Uh, but uh, and of course, games and all kinds of crazy stuff there. No, they, this the the virtual reality race is on. It's a dead heat. I think this everybody's out there. 
people have stuff in hands and we're going to really see what stands out and what people actually react, uh, react to. This is a new thing. It's just like when the iPhone come out. Nobody really knew what to expect or how people would get into when it. The, and there's developers behind it. And it's not just your game developers. I mean, the New York Times is behind. I mean, they, they're creating content for Daydream. Right. There, there's, there's so many ways to use this that people probably haven't even thought of yet. So so I'm, I, I think it only has room to grow. And I think getting those cheap devices in people's hands, I think, is only going to make it grow faster because it's only going to take a few people to say, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this and get a couple friends together, get a Kickstarter going, get get whatever and just keep keep growing that that universe. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's run down some real quick stories. Chill. Is there anything uh, you want to talk a little more extensively before we get into that that you may have in here? Um, no, I only have really one more thing I think in here and it's not all that super interesting. So if you want to do the rundown, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Microsoft's new paint app. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And, and, and Chachi, our boy Chachi is, is so proud of how much like his banners for Chachi says some stuff for Chachi plays. He didn't paint. He was the uh, paint expert of sorts. Um, I don't know how artistic generally he is, but uh, he was very good at it. But yeah, uh, uh, Microsoft Paint getting a major upgrade. No layers or anything like that, but looks like a fairly robust um, Microsoft Paint. So again, bringing some stuff to that. And I mean, Paint is something that that is there's solitaire and there's Paint, right? <laughs> I use market. Paint a lot at work just to mark up photos. Right, right. Is that I mean, well, even like the the picture view app or whatever on, 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 you know, Mac, you know, the Macs mm -hmm. are, uh, are so easy, you know, oh, okay, I can resize. Okay. I can, I can, I can, I can size that down. I can, I can make it smaller. Rock band VR is a completely different kind of guitar game. Kind of cool. It's first person. It's not entirely the full strumming effect. It's more kind of chords. Um, like it, it, you know, you're still using the guitar, but you're on stage and everything like that. I thought that was a really cool thing. Check that out if you can. Uh, the, they actually changed the entire function of the game after like first tests mm -hmm. and they're like this doesn't work and they pretty much made a whole new game out of it uh we talked about a lot of the oculus stuff uh sharp made its ultra hot phone display with actual curved corners that looks interesting i but i would have to wrap it in a case because i'm clumsy i dropped the phone majorly like yesterday i'm like good thing i got a case there oh. Um, and I think, oh, Pittsburgh interactive website maps and tracks city building permits in real time. Our friend, uh, Dan Berkowitz with Al Atlas development actually, um, who is going through a lot of permitting stuff because he's putting the other things that hopefully include a future home for this very studio and podcast, uh, says this is like bringing us out of the dark ages or something to that effect. He was very excited on Facebook when this came out. So really cool to see that as well. So. On that note, Chilla, a lot of stuff going on. I don't know about big events or anything Microsoft like that. Microsoft has an announcement on October what? 26th, and oh. I think we'll hear from Apple one more time by the end of the year. We'll see. Keep an ear out for that. Uh, from there, uh, we got events coming up. PodCamp Pittsburgh. Um, go to the Facebook events for PodCamp Pittsburgh. We haven't put any posts on the website just yet. Uh, but there is a boot camp next week, the uh, Carnegie Library of Beachview. You can join Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh um, to uh, uh, for an intro for blogging intro to blogging course. And of course, there's evening with PodCamp coming up near the end of the month up at Work Hard Pittsburgh, uh, last Wednesday of the month. I know, 26th, I think it is. Uh, we're going to be talking to a lot of foodie people and social media. Uh, information on that still forthcoming. Uh, I think we have it about locked down, so there should be something going online in the next several days, maybe by the time you're listening to this. And uh, other than that, please check us out. We're live, live I'm sorry, live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern on riversedgepgh.com. Thank you so much for them for supporting us supporting the show uh let us come out there for pod crawl a few weeks ago with our friend doug durda joining us uh follow us on on the uh, twitters and the facebook awesome cast on both youtube and awesome cast uh fa uh, let's say facebook video as well iheart radio spreaker youtube itunes all the places google music podcast please subscribe share with your friends if you want to support us monetarily pod uh, patreon.com slash awesome cast or just share it with your friends comment let us know if you think about stories share stories with us you think are interesting we like to roll those into the shows as well we have a facebook group where we're talking about stuff as well i share a lot of stories over there and sometimes we get some comments on them 
So uh, please let us know what you think. What's awesome? What's techy? What's geeky? What's great? Chillatech.net. That's where I can be found. John's Chilla on the Facebooks, Chilla on the Twitters. Mm. I'm at Sorgatron. Sorgatronmedia.com for this and so many other podcasts. Maybe there's one that you like. You never know. Uh, Sawtooth Willie, so much more. Sawtoothwilly.com. Finally got the website started. So if you want to check in there and see how that's coming, as my I I started another adventure with WordPress. Uh, so uh, with that, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, of course, thank you to our awesome chat room wheels in there, of course, and everybody else. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.